Welcome to Butcher Block Horror Podcast, where we exhume Whack. horror movies from the past and cut into what makes them so delectable. Well, I'm Kane. I'm JD. And I'm Joe. Hi, and Joe. Today, how you doing? Hey, Kane. Hey, hey Kane. how's everybody doing? Doing all right. How We're you all doing? right. Yeah. Well, I was just rolling through. You're rolling. I was rolling, rolling, roll. rolling, rolling. rolling. <laughs> no. And, well, today we're throwing the Stuart Gordon directed 1986 puppet horror movie Dolls yeah! onto the slab and carving up our favorite portions to force feed to you, our unwitting victims. Eat it. If you enjoy the taste of these feasts of fright, then give us a follow on your favorite podcast app. Or, or if you do the YouTube, you could click like, subscribe, and then the little bell. Yeah, yeah. Click that bell like it's a bell that you would click. You can ring our bell. Okay, enough, enough. Ring our bell. All right, yeah, yeah. So you can go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com where you can find our Patreon link as well as our link to our funky fresh Discord server. How do you like being interrupted over some stupid ass shit? We constantly interrupt Kane yeah, over stupid that's shit. Crazy. It's, I podcast with you guys, so <laughs> that's the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, JD. You didn't seem as enchanted with dolls as Joe and I, but... Yeah, I, I had fun. I would like you to at least give us a little bit of info about dolls. I will most certainly give some intel here on dolls. Many Bothans died to bring you this information. We're not scoping them out like some kind of foreign country and we're Navy SEALs sneaking in. No, I feel like I've been holding my breath for the last hour and a half. <laughs> All right. Underwater. Well, just... Yeah, that's the kind of anxiety that I just got from this movie. I feel okay. like I've just been, someone put their hand on the top of my head and just pushed me down into the wow. bathtub and said, you know what? Fuck you. Stop life. Okay. Just stop your life. It's a wow. dumb life. Just stop it. <laughs> okay. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about me. Just listen. Don't Dolls listen. was released. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Dolls wor was don't worry about me just listen <laughs> that sounds vaguely threatening <laughs> it does a little back to dolls yeah it had three release dates april 27th of 1987 at the seattle film festival then it was released again on may 22nd of 1987 in los angeles and finally, November 6th of 87, again in New York City. Go ahead, guys. New York City. New York City. With a runtime of 77 minutes, with a budget of $2 million at the box office, and a return of $3.5 million. And good for them. You know, I just realized that I said it was a 1986 dolls, but... That was because when I was looking stuff up, IMDb said 1986. And well, that's when they were creating it. Wikipedia said 1987. I think 1987 was the official release. Yeah, date. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's 1987. So this film was directed by Stuart Gordon, who we've talked at great lengths about mm -hmm. in previous episodes. Um, we consider Gordon to be a true master. Um, a quick Gordon 101, Gordon for dummies. Which we all are. Yeah. That's true. But Stuart Gordon directed Reanimator, From Beyond, Castle Freak, Dagon, films like those. Hell yeah. Legendary horror films. Classics one and all. Absolutely truth. Um, I'm going to kind of move on a little bit into the producer of Dolls, Charles Band, and Brian Usna. Another pair of familiar names mm -hmm. here on the Butcher Block. We I've have... never heard of them before. Oh, well, I am sorry, friend. It was the first time I've ever heard of them. You're drunk. Who's Charles Van and Brian Usna? Who, yeah, who what are those type guys? Of, is that grain <laughs> alcohol? What is that? <laughs> it's actually isopropyl alcohol. I bought oh, like a shit. bunch of bottles for cleaning and then decided to skip cleaning and just drink them all. Joe, let's go over there and pump his stomach. <laughs> He's fine. It's too late. Are you sure? Yeah, his alcoholism has reached a point that that's the only thing that can give him a buzz. It's just poison. Sure. <laughs> he's pickled. He's going to wind up like Keith Richards if he's not careful. Isn't Keith Richards dead now? No. Keith Richards is incredibly alive. Yeah, uh, he's, Charlie he's Watts immortal. Died fairly oh, that's right. Sadly, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, uh, Richards has got no agenda for uh, death. He's immortal. Yeah, pretty much. He's going to outlive us all. And I'm... I'm confident it's from alcohol and drug abuse. <laughs> Those things have pickled himself. him. Yeah. 
He has embalmed himself with <laughs> all sorts of chemicals. He's some kind of lich. Truly. But I, hey, man, if it works for you, you know. On to the plot of dolls. Yeah. So uh, some real shitty weather has a Judy and the fam, SOL, in the English countryside. They all seek shelter in an old mansion. It's there we meet the owners, Gabriel and Hillary. And we learn that Judy's stepmom does not have it going on. She is an actual, just a garbage human. Yeah. Yeah, they both sucked. Both of those parents were the worst. Absolutely. Yeah, Judy's dad, which was... Now, Kane. You're supposed to be telling uh, our listeners. You're going to tell us who the uh, actors were, Kate. I apologize. So this is what happened. I'm going to explain it straight out. Barbara Crampton tweeted Mm -hmm. a picture of herself from From Beyond. Sure. Mm. And it was a fantastic photo. And I felt obligated to respond to it with a quote retweet. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, I totally just zoned out into Barbara Crampton eyes. That's nice. what just happened. Way to be fucking around on Twitter while we're trying to record a podcast. Look, okay, I wasn't doing it. Like I was like listening, and then I clicked on it, and then it was there, and then it was just like, oh, look, there's Barbara Crampton being amazing. And uh-huh. then I retweeted her. So I apologize because we did have Carolyn Purdy Gordon. We had Ian Patrick Williams playing mom and dad, David Bauer and Rosemary Bauer. And then we had Carrie Lorraine playing Judy Bauer. And I apologize, but only a little bit. <laughs> so we have Stuart Gordon's wife that you've mentioned. Yeah, yeah she shows up in uh, a lot of his films, actually. That's true. That's true. Usually as a stern person. And the reason, you know, I refer to... Uh... You know what? I'm not sorry about it. All right? <laughs> I'm not sorry about it. Barbara Crampton is amazing. I apologize that it wasted you guys' time, but... There. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got stuff to do. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I'm hourly. So yeah, Gabriel is a, uh, a toy maker and he gifts Judy a new doll named Mr. Punch because um, her shitbag stepmom threw her teddy bear into a bush. It's true. Yeah. yeah and uh, Guy Rolf played Gabriel Hartwig. Amazingly. Oh, so yeah. good. So it good. was the perfect mix of charming, but also creepy. Yep. So in the midst of all this, we have more people wander through the storm seeking shelter in the mansion. We have Ralph. Who was played by Stephen Lee. And a pair of hitchhikers, Isabel and Enid. Isabel was actually played by Bunty Bailey, who was the woman in the AHA video, Take On Me. Very nice. And Enid was played by Cassie Stewart. I didn't see anything of note attached to the stuff that she did. Sure. And... They are, uh, you know, hitchhikers, but not only that, they're also petty thieves. That is, that is correct. The pettiest. Very petty. <laughs> the links they're willing to go to for like a wallet? For one to wallet. rob yeah. poor Ralph. Yeah. yeah. He does have a very fancy car, though. Yeah. Maybe it was a very full wallet. Exactly. It's possible. It's possible. We're not going to know those details. So anyway, everyone's invited to stay the night. The couple who own the mansion are quite hospitable. Yeah, and the uh, wife of Gabriel, Hillary, was actually played by Hillary Mason. Nice. So this mansion is an odd one, filled with toys and dolls and pretty much a, a place to get murdered in a horror film, if you <laughs> ask me. And from the outside, it kind of looks like Frankenfurter's place. In many ways, th- this movie has a lot of similarities to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. I mean, it's in a castle. Mm-hmm. That... People who they have a car incident during a storm and they flee into the castle to escape the storm. Okay. And then creepy events transpire. I mean, that's glossing it over, isn't it? Those are still notable similarities. I'm not saying that it ripped off or was inspired by. They were just interesting. It feels like you're reaching a little bit. I'll reach like over once you get once you get into the castle, the all of the correlation is gone, I think. I don't think they're they're similar at all at that point. Why do you like this? Continue. Yeah. Little Judy, she kind of sees part of a a murder and freaks out and no one believes her. Everyone's very dismissive of her murderous doll story. And so she finally convinces Ralph to uh, investigate along with her. And Ralph (laughs) ends up buying Judy's story after a short conversation with the doll. Based on conversations in previous episodes, JD would have believed the story immediately. Yep. Well... I don't know. I just don't feel like getting murdered by an inanimate object. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't inanimate at that point. Yeah, it was very animate. Yeah. 
So Rosemary, she gets jumped into the Dow gang <laughs> and they whoop her ass <laughs> as she tries to escape and she ends up flopping out a window, plunging into the cold abyss of eternal death. Well, I mean, this was after a whole bunch of stuff happened. The cold caress of death's icy fingers. Caress of steel. Where she will receive it's nothing a popular but Rush album in the, the darkness forever. One of their better ones, from what I understand. It's one of my favorite. But I would say that Isabel's death was pretty brutal. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the kills in this movie were pretty good. Yeah. The dolls picked Isabel up on the floor and just slammed her face repeatedly <laughs> into the wall. Mm hmm. Then drug her upstairs and turned her into a doll. Yeah. So, yeah, and I was about to just discuss the onslaught of dolls banding together to gruesomely murder Enid as she attempts to escape. She actually kicked some ass at the start of that fight, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did all right. She held her own for a bit, but then when murder dolls are... Right. When they seek your blood. They just get more pissed off when you fight back. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the big thing that did her in was the fact she did not anticipate the toy soldiers having live ammunition. Because mm. why would you? That was her fatal flaw. Right. Yeah, because we even talked about the fact that when Rosemary jumped out the window, she wasn't thrown. She just jumped out the window. Yeah. She could have been kicking accidental. the shit out of those, those Long -term dolls. Long-term solution to a short-term problem. Yeah, yeah, like she could have beat the crap out of those dolls. And then almost as if the movie heard Joe lament this, Enid starts beating the shit out of dolls, mm -hmm. <laughs> breaking their doll faces and exposing their desiccated, gooey puppet or human micro person. I don't, I don't know. They're, they're like zombies. Yeah, they were kind of zombie adjacent. Some of them seemed more mindless than others. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they definitely, when you broke open their face, they had like oh, little yeah, human yeah. faces inside and little skull faces. Yeah. But like, well, I thought Enid was doing pretty good, and then she ignored the live ammunition possibility. Right. Well, there's a reason for those uh, realistic innards, and I'll get to that in a bit. Sure. Yeah, when a doll pulls a gun on you, you back the fuck up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you cover. hold up and you wait. My friend had a dog pull a gun on him once. Wait, what? Uh, my friend Brian, who you've met, Kane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he lived with his dad, his dad had a gun case. And apparently the dog somehow got into the gun case and got a handgun out of it. The noise of this woke my friend up and he stumbled half awake out into the room. And the dog was just pointing a firearm at him. And this is why we need stricter gun control laws. I don't disagree. Yeah. And the way that he tells the story, he there was a moment where he wasn't sure if he was dreaming or not. Because the dog had a gun on him. Because the dog had a gun on him. That's and weird. it was holding the gun in its mouth by yeah. the handle? In the, in the, yeah, apparently it uh, it chewed up the grip. Oh my goodness. Was he afraid that the dog was going to like pull the trigger with its tongue? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but this got real weird. Magnum K9. That sounds like we're talking about a fucking dog cop movie or something. Oh God. Yeah. Getting oh. smoked by your best friend. Imagine that. <laughs> Oof. Ah. This summer, man's best friend is man's worst enemy. Magnum K9. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. We're stupid. Do -do -do -do. Yeah. yeah, we are. Meanwhile, Ralph, you know, he kind of gets caught in a trap meant for others. Does a little uh, doll stomping. Which is a poor decision. <laughs> Bad decision, yeah. And so then he begins to get his ass whooped. Right. Real. I mean, he's getting tuned up like you wouldn't even believe by a lot of dolls. And there was Judy, a swarm. Mm -hmm. Sweet little Judy convinces them to set him free and stop fucking him up. And so, like, once Ralph and Judy head to the workshop, that's where they find David. <laughs> well, I mean... David found them. Well, I guess, yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, there was that whole scene where the puppets were, like, kind of deciding their fate. Yeah. That was you know? one of my favorite scenes. It was yeah, so that was a good. Scene. It was because, so good. The stop animation was so good. bullshit mm -hmm. behavior. Right. The puppets had to have a conference. They were like, what do we do with this guy? <laughs> we like this kid, but this guy just stomped a bunch of us. Yeah, and the kid's How in his favor. Like, what do yeah. we do? You know, and they were conflicted, and you could see it. The scene was tense with uh, yeah, because one of the puppets do. had like a real shitty look on its face the whole time. Like, nah, fuck mm. this guy. Let's yeah. let's just end him. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it was about to go down. Yeah, it looked like it was going to, and then I guess they like 
finally come to the decision and they're like, all right, go ahead. And then they magically open the door and they're like, go on, get the fuck out of here. Get out of here before we change our mind. Yeah. So David's in a fit of rage though, right? Why is he in a fit of rage though? Because his wife was murdered. And he was trying to sex her dead body. Was he really? I mean, he didn't know she was dead. No, like, no. He wow. was trying yeah. to beg sex out of her and then pulled the blanket down and then her crushed face turned. Right. Yeah. And then she latched onto him. That was the yeah, weird she, part. That was weird. Yeah, it really was. There was, was no was. reason. It wasn't a zombie movie. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and she also wasn't a doll. Right. And then we watched a human man fight a, a mannequin for a couple minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was fun. I always like when actors are made to fight props. <laughs> but Ralph's defense is that the dolls are attacking everyone, and, and Psychopath David knocks them both out in a fit of rage. Yep. He even knocks his own kid out. Which was shitty. Yeah. yeah, he was super cuckoo. Anyway, David begins getting fucked up by the Mr. Punch doll, basically, and the other <laughs> that dolls. Was, that was they, good. He just kept getting <laughs> javelin-style weapons thrown at him. Yeah, little spears and yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was, that was an incredible little battle. The other dolls rescue Ralph and Judy as uh, David and Mr. Punch face off. And David does end up coming out on top. Well, it was because the Mr. Punch doll decided that a drill was going to handle the business. Right. And then David just unplugged it. I was thinking the doll was just going to stab him with the unplugged drill, but apparently that's not how it went down. Well, no. And then David smashes Mr. Punch's face like right. very easily. And then things get ultra weird <laughs> as if they weren't weird enough. There was no inner goopy puppet thing. Or there was... Yeah. There was, there was a little no shriveled sap. body. There was a little was, something going on in there. It was just like a mist that came out of the yeah, Mr. Punch doll. It wasn't totally clean. There was something happening, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't, wasn't grotesque. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It was underwhelming. Anyway, uh, things get ultra weird as the Hartwicks. That's the uh, the couple that own the, the mansion's last name, <laughs> and the Hartwicks reveal that they are well. They were guessed to be a witch and wizard couple, a power couple. And uh, they that adds like a new element to the the conversation about power couples. It does. Yeah, the the guess was correct. You know, as uh, toy makers, they they also see toys as these like magical things. That I think there was almost a quote, something like the heart and soul of childhood. And so they basically hate on the jaded, thick skin and hardness of adulthood. And so, like when people show up to their mansion. They use their army of murderous dolls to sort of like test folks out and and learn if they're pieces of shit or not. Mm -hmm. And it's not entirely accidental. Yeah, it's just a little bit set up. I mean, they're they're trying to population control. And And it seems like there's almost, you know, because of the way that the movie ends, there's some kind of unseen force that draws people to their house. Yep. Like maybe they cast a spell that draws shitty people with children to their house. I mean, they are a witch and a warlock. They have that ability to lure the shitbags. And I think they give them a fair chance. But if you remain a shitbag, if you don't learn your lesson and and embrace your inner child, then you get turned into a doll. Hence all the goopy insides of some of the dolls that were exposed in their innards unleashed i don't think it's a lot of a chance though i don't think they really give you a lot of a chance you're either shitty or you're not i think is what it comes down to but i mean ralph had a chance and he proved himself to some degree he also had judy you know yeah i think if if the child vouches for you that gives you better odds yeah absolutely he also liked toys though that's true he did He, he was at one with his inner child yeah Whereas Rosemary and David, Enid and Isabel, they didn't give a shit about the toys. Every instance of them interacting with the toys is a negative interaction. Right. Right. Ralph and Judy, the way I saw it, they were in like Flint. They were on Team Doll. Yep. And they shall see no harm done to them, basically. So they have earned themselves the right to live past their traumas. They live through their murder doll traumas, basically. Right. (laughs) And they come out on the other side of it triumphantly with a greater appreciation for life i think that's the goal sure. of the hartwicks they want people to connect with their inner child and have also have a greater appreciation for life yeah. that's... and then they sell a really fucked up story that ralph obviously didn't believe right but what are you gonna say right you're gonna say nothing you're gonna get your car and get the hell out of you're there you're gonna say yes sir and get out of there as quick as you can exactly but yeah the ending of gabriel reading a note I'm holding up quotation marks you guys can't see. A note 
that David left for Judy. I don't know if I mentioned that, but Judy was played by Carrie Lorraine. Hmm. But the note was just like, yeah, we're leaving. We're changing our names. Go live with your mother. Have a good life. Well, prior to that, we have David, who was slowly transformed into a doll because he just was one of those people that he couldn't learn his lesson. He turned into the Mr. Punch doll. Right. He was Mr. Punch doll's replacement. Which was pretty fun to watch. Yeah, those were some solid special effects. Yeah, so David turns into a puppet. Gabriel lies and says that they left. And then Ralph's like, oh, well, what about the girls I brought? He's like, oh, P.S. Isabel and Eden are coming with us. And then he throws yep. the note into the fire. <laughs> so, yeah, that next morning was a strange one. Sure. Um, and, and I feel like Gabriel knew that there was no way that Ralph was going to believe that story. Yeah. Like he just didn't give a shit. Nope. <laughs> just look at him in the eye the whole time. Like, what are you going to do? What are hey. you going to do? Yeah, could you imagine being Ralph and Judy uh, being convinced that they just had a bad dream? That's all that experience was. <laughs> I mean, the story itself that they tried to say, oh, you knocked down the toy shelf and bumped your head. Like, really? Why, why was I there? <laughs> like, Yeah. After you know you've witnessed several murders, you're being gaslit and told that everyone's changing their name and leaving the country. I mean, that, I, I, yeah, that's... <laughs> It's a yeah. weird way to handle the end of a plot. It is. It is. It's kind of like the movie wrote itself into a corner. Yeah. Something landed in the corner. No one puts baby in the corner. That's for sure. I mean, at this point, I feel like they could have just been like, look, I'm a wizard. She's a witch. And, you know, we turned your dad and your stepmom into dolls. Because they sucked. Because they sucked. Yeah. And now you're going to spend your time at your mom's and she loves you. And in Boston. With in four- Boston. I mean, uh, I almost said Florida. Why am I thinking of Florida? I would Boston, Florida. Everybody knows about That's right. Fast and Florida. Boston, Florida. <laughs> but so yeah, now Judy and Ralph they're headed to Boston, and Ralph might end up even being Judy's new dad, which is weird. I think that possibility was on the table. Well, I mean, that was the possibility that Judy suggested. I'm pretty right. confident when this strange man shows up with her with daughter. Your child. Yeah. Ralph is not done doing cocaine and banging hookers. He's not ready to settle down. <laughs> yeah. and like Before this moment, he was picking up young woman hitchhikers. Yeah. Who were on the verge of <laughs> robbing him. Yeah. And hoping that he could get sex out of them. Yeah. yeah. He was going to allow them to rob him just so he could be the centerpiece of a very kinky threesome. Right. He's not going to become Judy's new dad. No, no, he's not. All right. What an episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the end of the film is kind of open to a sequel, in my opinion, being that the dolls of David, Rosemary, Enid, Isabel, they're all on a shelf. And it just so happens to be that a car is stuck in the mud outside the yeah. mansion. And of all the movies, you know, all of the full moon movies that got endless sequels and, you know, Critters got a sequel. Right. Why didn't they make a dolls too? Stuart Gordon was at one point interested in yeah. doing a sequel for this movie. And there mm-hmm. was even like a storyline, which would have basically suggested that Ralph and Judy got back to Boston. Ralph married Judy's mom and Judy receives a box from England and it has Gabriel and Hillary in there as dolls. Oh, nice. Judy's mom had it going on. I mean, they would just become a family. Sure. Right. I guess since Ralph wasn't a shit bag. A nuclear family <laughs> with a, a halfway decent dad. <laughs> Although, again, you know, he was just moments ago picking up young right. woman hitchhikers <laughs> yeah. and trying to get sex out of them. Well, I mean, sure. the, the possibility exists that after his ordeal in the castle, he was ready to settle down. He was going from zero to 90 back to zero. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I was almost murdered by dolls. I'm going <laughs> to live Rethink a quiet life. <laughs> Time to settle fence, down. Barbecues, you know, the whole shebang in Boston. Right, right. right. At least the Sam Adams Brewery is out there. He can go and have himself a cold one. There are Sam Adams Breweries all over the place. I imagine that both of those people, Judy and Ralph, probably had a substance abuse problem in their later years. Yeah. Because there's going to come a point where Ralph is like, look, you know, Judy, that wasn't a dream, right? You realize that, right? And she's going to be like, yeah, I didn't want to admit it. And then they're just going to do alcohol together. Yeah, that kid saw multiple murders. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with trauma like that? You drink about it. Exactly. And fantastic murders that no one would believe. Right. right. 
Yeah, no one's going to believe you if you're like, I was at this creepy castle in England and my dad, my stepmom, and these two ladies were brutally murdered by the doll inhabitants. With a <laughs> like, fucking mini axe and a letter right. opener. Her and the kid from Chucky are going to get a support group going. That's the, yeah. that's the only outcome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, Andy Barclay ends up hunting Chucky's. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Barclay fights Chucky. I've heard that the Child's Play sequels get pretty wild. I have a thing where after Child's Play 2, mm -hmm. yeah. I just kind of lose interest. Yeah, sure. that's when I checked out. But then the new ones, Curse of Chucky and uh, Cult of Chucky. Mm-hmm. Those two, I think, were a lot of fun. Those are on Netflix right now. Okay, I'll check them out. But those were a lot of fun, and Andy Barclay shows back up. Hmm. And his sister from part two, like his foster sister, shows up as well. Oh, cool. Hmm. It was good times. Good. It was good times. But we're not talking about Child's Play. No. We're talking about dolls. Dolls. And I think the plot of this movie has been thoroughly gone over. Yeah, we yeah. hit it. So real quick, Joe... There was actually some pretty decent, in my opinion, cinematography in there. Who was that? Uh, Mac Alberg. Mac Alberg. Mac Alberg, who uh, also did cinematography for Reanimator and some other horror. He did cinematography for some Full Moon stuff, Puppet Master, The Legacy, Evil Bong. <laughs> Nice. Apparently, he liked doing cinematography in doll movies. Right. Also, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3, he did cinematography hmm. for. What an interesting career. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he did a Seriously. bunch of stuff throughout the, the 80s and 90s. He was working. So one of the things, before JD tells us about the special effects, one of the things I wanted to talk about was the music is actually credited to Fuzby Morse okay. and Victor Spiegel, but it was overseen by Richard Band. And so I can only imagine what that scenario looked like. Because it did have a Richard Band vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It got that the Richard Band feel out of it. Yeah. But I do think that it was just Richard Band high in a corner. Mm -hmm. And then Fuzby produces some music for him. And he's like, no, it needs more <laughs> this. It needs more that. Right. <laughs> and uh, the, remember the synthesizer trumpet? I do remember <laughs> the synthesizer trumpet. No, no. That's just what tiny trumpets sound like. Okay, that's possible, but yeah. They couldn't record a second and a half of a trumpet and pitch it or... Right, or just a coronet even. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a like bugle. alto trumpet, like no, none of that. Yeah, or a toy trumpet. I'm sure they sell those somewhere. Sure, no, but just, anyway. just play it on a synth, move on. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, the special effects for Dells were handled by uh, quite a cast of special effects artists nice. and, uh, you know... Oh, Mac Albrecht also did cinematography for Robot Jocks. That's hilarious. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good, man. <laughs> I thought should I threw you off your thing. No, no. Should I cut back into it? No, yeah, you're good. I'm sorry. I, my, I got excited by that fact. Continue. Right on. Well, we have a lengthy cast of special effects artists for this film. As you would know if you've just watched it, there was quite a bit happening with yeah. the dolls. So we have David Allen, who we've mentioned in previous episodes, and mm. he was responsible for the majority of the, the doll effects. So there was stop motion. There was um, actually, I think John Carl Buschler might have been more heavy handed in the bladder effects and things like that. Mm -hmm. More of the makeup. Man, that Buschler just keeps popping up. Yeah. The Buschmeister was... was uh, all over, you know, Bushler. everywhere. Bushler. All right, that joke's gone on far too long. I'm not tired of it. Then we have uh, another power couple to mention. We have John and Vivian Brunner. They didn't have a long list of movies they were involved in, but they did do a couple of cool ones. There is a film called Life Force from 1985, which kind of like a sci-fi horror, but the most notable makeup slash special effects artist. Well, John Carl is up there, so is David Allen, but Gabriel Bartolos was the special effects artist, and he was responsible for Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, Basket Case 2 of 90, or I'm sorry, Basket Case 3, the progeny of <laughs> 1991. And he also worked on Leprechaun 4 in Space. <laughs> that movie sucked. Ugh, yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. So yeah, those are the main players in the special effects department, and we saw uh, you know, a fair amount of fake blood. Not the most realistic blood we've witnessed in a horror film, but 
fake blood all the same. Mm -hmm. A decent amount of puppetry and I'm sure some animatronic bits, a lot of stop motion, some bladder right. effect. Oh, much stop motion. Pretty cool stop motion. Transformations, though, from human to doll. Any moment when that was happening, that, that was heavy in the special effect department. So that was kind of cool. And yeah, that's really about as far as I dove into the special effects, just so. Right on. We could get to our impressions of the film. All right. Well, why don't we, yeah, yeah why don't we go ahead and do our uh, experience with the film as per usual. Joe, go ahead and start us off. Sure. Yeah, I had never seen or I don't feel like even heard of Dolls before we watched it for this. And taken you know out, like none of the individual parts of it were great like the acting wasn't really all that except for gabriel i thought was really good yep the writing the dialogue wasn't wonderful the special effects were cool but somehow despite individually nothing about the movie being all that good I genuinely enjoy dolls. Yeah. Yeah. More so than some of the other like full moon tier evil puppet movies we've watched this season. I genuinely had a good time with dolls. You I thought sound it was a lot of fun. Very drunk right now. Have you been drinking? No, no. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm messing you know, with you. I'm... No, no, that was just me being an asshole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. But no, I, I genuinely just you know, despite myself, because I was kind of dreading watching it, like this is gonna suck. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bit whiny. Yeah, I mean, I do that every time. That's just yeah. what I like to do to annoy you. The film came <laughs> with some surprises. But yeah, like it caught me off guard how much I enjoyed it and how effective it was. That's it. Excellent. Yeah, that's really all I have to say. All right. Well, JD, you want to go ahead and... Yeah, full disclosure, I initially I, I knew this film existed, but I just opted out. I chose not to partake. I knew it was there. But it was always one of those films where, you know, you walk past it in the video store, you just don't really, I don't know, I had other priorities in horror, and so this was my first viewing of Dolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing about it screams, watch this movie. It's right. true. Or like, rent me when you're a, yeah. a preteen. Because it was all box art. Yeah. That's what made you, well, at least when I was a kid, you, you would get a movie at the video store based off of the box art. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Box art. And the box art for this movie was not appealing. It was right. just like exactly. a, a doll holding an eyeball. And it was like, all right, whatever. It was uh, relatively flat for being, you know, attention seeking from cover art for a, a VHS or a DVD or just whatever. Sure. So I, I always moved past it. But seeing it now, I, I you know, I have a warm spot for a, a gooey puppet movie. And as we are in, you know, season four of the butcher block, the gooey puppet season, <laughs> I had higher expectations in the, in the gooey puppet department. Mm -hmm. I did appreciate the scene where the dolls had their mini conference over mm -hmm. uh, what was to become of Ralph. But, you know, after Judy begged for his life, I mean, that was the peak for me, you know? And, uh, the, the puppet transformation of David, that was one of the strongest special effects moments. That's kind of what I'm always looking for. And right. um, yeah, I don't know. I like the film, but I don't know that I would say that it's one of Stuart Gordon's best. Sure. But uh, I did think it was just better across the board than any of the Puppet Master films I've seen. Sure. It was just generally more competent. Some of the Puppet Master films, as they go on, they do get better mm. as special effects, you know, become more accessible. And, right. You know, they have more options of what kind of effects they'll add to a film. But Sure, sure. So they did improve over the years, but they, I agree to the, you know, the initial breath that those films took, this is stronger. Right. And the dolls were in it a bunch. Yes. Which is kind of one of my points of judgment for an, an evil puppet movie. Sure. Is how much the puppets are in it. Yeah. If you're calling a film dolls, you better see some fucking dolls. Right. Yeah. Well, you say that, but I mean, Puppet Master 1 has... Five minutes of dolls. Yeah, very little puppets in it. It was well over an hour, and you get five minutes of dolls. Right. That's unacceptable. Yeah, so dolls delivered on <laughs> dolls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that sounds good. So yeah, that, that basically summarizes <laughs> my... I had to get a little help from my friends here on the conclusion of my personal 
experience with the film because I'm left a bit speechless <laughs> and a bit saddened that there wasn't a sequel. I feel like the sequel would have been, yeah. uh, you know, fruitful in terms of greater special effects just maybe occurring a little bit later, them having a little more access to stuff. Right. But then again, who knows? Maybe after that, the, I mean, they grossed, what, three and a half mil? So they would mm -hmm. maybe they would have had a budget. a budget. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the budget would have been yeah. smaller though. Who knows? So right. Just, and horror movie sequels are often worse. That's true. So who's to say? Yep. So yeah, Kane. Uh, how about you share your personal experience with the film? I have also never seen this until today. Damn, that's a first. Where all three of us had never seen it. Yeah, I think that might be. Yeah, first. it took four seasons for it to happen. It's a rare one. It's happened before, but it's a rare one. Sure. I just don't remember that incident. The big thing was the box art. It really was. Yeah. When we would, me and my brother would be unleashed into the video store to find a few horror movies to watch. Yeah. We would just skip over that one because there was box art right. that promised way better movies. Sure. And now I'm kind of sad because I'm pretty confident I would have really gotten a kick out of that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I oh, enjoyed I know the I movie. You know, I had fun with it tonight, but I really think a lot was lost not having seen it as a kid. For sure. Yeah. Aside from that, I really don't have anything else to say. I loved the puppets. I loved the stop motion was really, really well done. Mm -hmm. I loved the actual damage shown when the puppets hit somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was some pretty good gore. Yeah, like like Rosemary, you know, has like a chunk taken out of her arm. They're like sawing at her wrist. And then at mm -hmm. one point they have a hacksaw and they're like sawing at her foot. And that was pretty brutal. That was that was fun to watch. Yeah, they weren't afraid to show off new holes. No, they were not. And it was, you know, the, her crushed face when the blankets pulled back was pretty impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, overall, I had a good time and I'm, I'm glad that we watched it. Absolutely. Yeah, and not terribly exploitation -y. No, not really. Yeah, they missed all of that, you know, which is rare for this era of films. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have anything else to say? Um, if you like full moon, like Puppet Master kind of movies, check out Dolls. It's kind of better than a lot of those movies. Yeah. Honestly, if you're listening to this, we're hoping that you've already watched Dolls. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Right. Because we've just spoiled all yeah, of it. We fired yeah. warning shots last episode. <laughs> we did. We should have been ducking and watching. <laughs> Anyhow, if you watch Dolls, let us know what you think. You can find us anywhere the podcasts live. You can also go to our website, wegiveyoubrainworms.com. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the YouTube channel, Brainworms Presents, and put your block plays there. And yeah. like subscribe, click the bell. Right. <laughs> Do those things and fire a warning shot for what's to come in a future episode. I was going to do that. Next week, we're covering Puppet Master 2. Puppet Master 2. So we're going to see. Wow. <laughs> we're going to see. A little Popeye. Thing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to see. 10 they... minutes of dolls in Puppet Master 2. <laughs> exactly. We're going to see if they learned the lesson <laughs> from Puppet Master and if they added more doll time in Puppet Master 2. Right. Will there be more psychics? Will there be now, <laughs> witches instead of psychics? Will there be more dolls? There's a possibility. Dolls? I'm pretty sure I remember watching Puppet Master 2. If it's the mm. one that introduces the like flamethrower guy, mm -hmm. then I have seen it, and it does have more puppets. I've seen it. I've seen Puppet I Master 2. I remember nothing yeah, about I, it. I, 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 it's just uh, been a long time. Yeah, it's going to feel like much like the week of dolls where we're like seeing it for the first time. Right. I know I've seen the first three puppet masters. Yep. I just can't recall a thing about it. Like, I don't want to say anything I've seen and most of confuse it with the third <laughs> puppet master. So. But I remember nothing. Right. Right. But yeah, go to the YouTube channel. Feel yeah. free to leave us a comment, subscribe and all that stuff. All right. I guess I'm. I think we're done. Yep. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Au revoir, Pee Wee. Yeah. What do you do with trauma like that? You drink about it.